Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Amuna Project. We here at the Amuna Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to information, education, inspiration, guidance, advice, and I'd like to concentrate this morning on the uh, prophecies uh, of Isaiah, specifically his final prophecies contained in his last chapter, 66, when he deals with the coming of the Messianic uh, uh, age. He uh, ends his book by... Um, uh, recounting the uh, special uh, uh, worship, the special reverence that the Jewish people have uh, toward uh, Hashem, and that they direct toward Hashem uh, specifically with respect to the um, meticulous observance of Shabbos and uh, the new moon, Rosh Chodesh, marking uh, um, the new month. And... Um, Isaiah also envisions the ultimate collapse of uh, the other nations of the world uh, and the final uh, war of wars uh, that will bring about uh, their collapse. And this collapse, this defeat, uh, will help prompt uh, the other nations of the world uh, to fulfill one of the, uh, the greatest prophecies of the Messianic Age. Uh, not only universal peace, but universal knowledge of God, universal acceptance of the God of Israel as the ultimate uh, creator uh, and the ruler of the universe. Isaiah also points out that the um, the Bezmegdash, the the, the final, uh, the final uh, restored uh, temple, uh, will serve as a vehicle. Uh, through which the, the Jewish people uh, brings itself nearer uh, to the Creator, nearer to Hashem. Um, those who respect the sanctuary and bring the uh, offerings and the sacrifices with the proper kavana, with the proper spiritual intent, uh, they will be rewarded. Uh, those who do, delude themselves into thinking that um, you can uh, somehow serve God and bring these offerings uh, without any spiritual intent, uh, without any uh, proper uh, kavana. They can just go through the moves. They will be um, greatly disappointed. Uh, they will be uh, punished accordingly. And this merely uh, reflects the words uh, uh, of the Tanakh contained uh, in the book of Proverbs, where it says, on two occasions, uh, chapter 15, uh, verse 8, and chapter uh, 21, verse 27, the sacrifices of the wicked are an abomination. It's not, it's, you're better off not doing anything, actually, because if you go through the moves of the sacrifice, if, of, the, of the offerings in the temple, and it has zero effect on you, that's even worse. That's an abomination to God. You're better off staying at home. Um, Isaiah also uh, concentrates on the rebirth uh, of the Jewish people and uh, the setting up of uh, Israel and the rebuilding of uh, Jerusalem. And uh, he stresses that will happen remarkably quickly. The imagery that Isaiah uses uh, is that of a very, very uh, quick childbirth, where it's like, you know, labor delivery, boom. And before you even know it, uh, uh, we've heard stories of uh, children being born in taxi cabs and, and in driveways. Uh, my, uh, my, grand uh, my granddaughter Leah uh, was uh, in Israel and uh, in Ashdod, was a very, very quick delivery. Uh, I think uh, it was my uh, son in law who said she was, you know, she was practically born in the hospital lobby. It was very quick. And this, again, this astonishing uh, reestablishment of uh, the Jewish people and the rebuilding of Israel will also help prompt the world uh, to recognize that, uh, that the Creator is the Creator and that the, uh, the God is the only God and the ultimate ruler of the universe. Um, and all those who have been loyal throughout uh, the desolation uh, uh, of Israel and the desolation of uh, Jerusalem for the last 2,000 years will rejoice uh, in its rebuilding. Um, a comment also with respect to the, the people who uh, mourn. Um, it's uh, chapter 66, verse 10, 
um, which says that, uh, which is where the prophet Isaiah says, Rejoice with Jerusalem, be blissfully glad with her, all of you who kept yourselves in mourning over her. These are the people who for the last 2,000 years would constantly not only mention the destruction and the hope for the rebuilding of Jerusalem, but also uh, mourn. And this, uh, this requiring uh, uh, yourself to be mournful, even in the most joyous of circumstances, uh, is a key, uh, a key element. Um, uh, spiritual uh, complacency is uh, tantamount to stagnation. Um, and it re regrettably leads to personal destruction. Have you ever wondered why at a wedding, right when the, the chusen kala, right when the, the husband and wife are being married, and it's, it's finally, it's official, and just before everyone yells mazel tov, the, uh, the groom uh, breaks glass, he steps on a, a light bulb, or, or, or rarely these days, an actual glass. Uh, it's usually a light bulb or something um, uh, wrapped in a napkin. The point is to break glass. Why? How did this minig, how did this custom come about? Because even at the point where we are the happiest, we are rejoicing uh, most greatly, that breaking of the glass should remind us that even in uh, the heights of joy, we must remember uh, the destruction of uh, the temple and the uh, the gullus, the the, uh, uh, the exile, the diaspora, uh, and we need to think of this. We need to bring ourselves, uh, force ourselves. Uh, remind ourselves of this uh, because uh, we do not want to be spiritually complacent and uh, we don't want that stagnation. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, other videos along these lines. Please come back, please watch, please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Amuna Project, I'm Daniel and thank you too much.